What is civil forfeiture? Well, anybody who's ever been arrested by the police for any type of a drug charge has probably been threatened that they will take their car, take their house, take anything they possibly can, and in many cases this is exactly what the police do. And forfeiture has always been something that goes along with crime and gangs because the idea behind it is if you force drug dealers to forfeit their assets, then they can't just get out of jail and do it again. And in theory, this may work in some cases, but overall it's an invasion into uh, the freedom of Americans and their right to have a trial and to actually have a charge put against them before they lose their assets. And the reason I'm talking about this today is because uh, a strange synchronicity happened. And this morning I was reading an article that was talking about how in 2014 there were more seizures, civil forfeitures, assets taken from the people by the police than were taken by robberies. And so I'll repeat this. The government, the police, took more money and more resources and more things from people than all of the criminal robberies in, this, in the nation combined. The numbers were $5 billion in assets were seized and $3.5 billion in robberies. Now, if you add in all types of, uh, you know, money that's being taken through, you know, white-collar crimes, uh, it comes up to, you know, somewhere around $12 billion. Which, even with that, even with all the white-colored crime, you know, it's still only double what the police took. But uh, when you're talking about taking assets, physical assets, it's pretty absurd to think that the government's taking more than others are taking from each other. You know, the whole idea of having police under this fear that we need protection for one another. Uh, but the police are not obligated to protect you. In fact, this has come up in court several times over the past few decades, where police were... Uh, being sued because they refused, because they didn't help someone who had called or who needed help. And, uh, of course, they always win the cases, you know, they can shoot you in the face and win the case. This is the problem. This is the line between police and the people, you know. And I didn't want this to turn into a police thing, but it is, because the police are the ones that are making the seizures and doing the threats. I've been involved. I've been arrested when I was younger, and the first thing they did was threaten to take my car, my mom's car, and my mom's house, just from a couple of measly pot plants when I was younger, a kid. This is what police do. They try to scare people, intimidate them. And, you know, I find it absurd. 80% of the nation, 80% of the citizens in this nation um, oppose civil forfeiture. So that tells you something. Four out of five people believe that they should not take your assets, even if you are a criminal. But I'll tell you this, seizures can happen before, not only before a charge has been filed, but uh, before a conviction happens, but before charges are even filed. They can take everything from you. And what this can do to a person who's in the midst of a case, who, say, gets falsely accused of a crime, uh, the police come in, they find a gram of cocaine that maybe the person's personal, or even a gram of cannabis, and take everything from the guy. Somehow find some baggies in the drawer and say, you're a dealer. And they do this all the time. It's ludicrous. So, I was reading this thing about the civil forfeiture this morning, and I decided I'm going to make a video talking about this, because it's so absurd. It's always bothered me, but that the cops took more than criminals, that bothers me, you know, even more. Uh, but then, um... I kind of delayed making the video, I had to get some work done, and then right before I came out I looked at my most recent email, and it was from the Drug Policy Alliance, and it was an email about how Jeff Sessions, just yesterday, or I believe it was actually today, um, signed, uh, basically eliminated what they called the FAIR Act, F-A-I-R, and the FAIR Act was supposed to limit forfeitures, and civil forfeitures in these cases in order to, you know, try to prevent some of this abuse of power. Because the police are, they have, you know, they, they want, forfeiture allows them to make more profit for their, uh, for their stations, for their, you know, their law enforcement. They can use a lot of this money to buy things, to buy tanks, and not only on top of all the military gear and hardware that's being given to the police, in even small towns, but the fact that they want to take as much as possible because they're going to see some of it. And we all know that there's plenty of dirty cops, too, who will take whatever they want off the top. And that makes it even harder to trust anyone, and it makes it hard to see a criminal compared to a police officer who's going to do a criminal act. And society has shown this over and over. When we look at television and the shows, cops get away with everything, and they cheat. 
they lie. They break the law. And in the mentality of these law and order type shows, it's like, well, it's okay if the police break the law because sometimes we got to get down to the level of the criminals. And that's fucking absurd, pardon my language. You, you, you do not get to somebody else's level in order to, you know, if you want to follow the law, follow the law. But, you know, I'll tell you, you know, with all the police shootings going on, it's easy to ignore. But the one that happened the other day with that Australian woman is going to completely turn that around. She called the police two times because she heard noise in the alley behind her house. It was 11 at night. She came walking up to the police car when they drove up in her bathrobe up to the driver's side. The passenger cop leans over and shoots her and kills her through the driver's side window. How does this happen? It's fear. It's ignorance. It's bad training. And I'm not here to harp on cops. I'm just here to, you know, bring to light some of the forfeiture issues and why police can, you know, uh, back each other up because if you have, if it's your job, it's your life, they're your family. But I find that a little bit shallow, and, and that's putting it lightly, to think that your fellow police officers are more important than the people you're supposed to be representing and protecting. So I would say shame on any police officer who would uh, do the wrong thing to protect somebody just because they don't want to be singled out. I'm, I understand that we all have to sometimes, you know, bite the bullet, so to speak. But when it comes to, uh, you know, being fair, being honest, you know, we expect that from police. Or I should say, we should expect that from police, but we don't. People don't like the cops, and that's a big problem. Um, and on top of this, and this isn't the police's fault themselves, but uh, the laws are passed and they abide by the laws that are passed. So if they make it illegal, a criminal offense, a felony to have a small amount of marijuana, they're glad to take people to jail for it. But the, the thing is, the prison industry is run by private companies now. We have less violent crime than we've ever had in history, and more criminals in jail than we've ever had in history. And a vast percentage of those are nonviolent drug offenders. And that is something that just has to change. And these forfeiture laws apply to these small-time criminals as well. And, you know... Uh, I was going to read, this is the U U.S. Department of Justice Criminal Division, this is the, I printed this out, it's to the Heads of Department of Justice Components from Deborah Connor, Acting Chief, Money Laundering and Asset Recovery Section, Criminal Division. Um, so it says, and this is, you know, double speak, if you will, this is the kind of wording they use to pass this off, but I'm going to read it anyway. On July 19, 2017, the Attorney General issued an order allowing Department of Justice components and agencies to forfeit assets seized by state or local law enforcement, referred to in the order as federal adoptions. Love that. Under the Attorney General orders, federal adoptions of all types of assets seized lawfully by state or local law enforcement under the respective state laws is authorized whenever the conduct giving rise to the seizure violates federal law. The net equity and value thresholds found in the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Policy Manual will continue to apply. Agencies and components should prioritize the adoption of assets that will advance the Attorney General Violent Crime Reduction Strategy. The Department, through legal counsel for federal investigative agencies, as well as through the U.S. Attorney's offices, will continue to ensure that adoptions are conducted in the compliance with law and department policies. Specifically, the following safeguards, among others, shall be maintained and implemented to ensure that there is sufficient evidence of criminal activity and that the evidence is well documented. And this is the following safeguard. To ensure that adoptions involve property lawfully seized, legal counsel at the federal agency adopting the seized property must continue to review all seizures. And then it's got the seizure limits down below. Um, we already have more than enough seizures, and this is the point I'm making, you know, in 2014 being almost double what was, see what was stolen from criminals, and now they're asking to be able to seize more. And uh, to me this just shows the, the wrong direction that our government is taking. Uh, drug abuse, drug use, has never been curbed by laws. Laws have a very limited effect and a very temporary effect on a problem. It's like the SITSA Act they're that they're trying to pass. It just went through the House Judiciary Committee. And that's the Stop Importation and Trafficking of Analogs, of Synthetic Analogs Act. 
and right in the name, is synthetic analogs. I mean, the very act by definition says synthetic analogs, meaning that, you know, I know not a lot of people, some of you know where I'm coming from on this, but uh, where trying to make things like Kratom illegal is going to be more difficult than trying to make fentanyl illegal. And fentanyl overdoses are on the rise, and they're, they're horrible. A 10-year-old boy died on his way home from school the other day, uh, and they, after he went to go swim at the gym, and they believe he got in contact with some fentanyl somewhere, um, uh, another kid recently died too. And these are kids that, sure, you could think maybe they were just smoking it with their friends or something, but, uh, you know, the evidence says that they weren't con consuming it on their own. Fentanyl is so strong that's two milligrams, uh, it can kill you. Or, you know, if you're young enough, small enough, it's a... Dosage aside, very small amounts of this drug are dangerous, and it's causing many overdoses. Therefore, they're trying to pass this analog act in order to better control these synthetics that are coming in. That's something I can understand. But using it to get around the laws, this also allows Jeff Sessions to take full control. And here we have the scariest drug guy ever in the Attorney General's seat. You can see it in this guy's eyes. He is just clueless. He's stuck in the past. He's a 50s mindset. Uh, and I can't even use decades because we're well aware that there were plenty of intelligent beatniks in the 50s. It's just a matter of your, your, your background, your upbringing. And he's one of those, thinks he's a good old boy and that he's protecting everyone. But he may truly feel that he's going about it properly by saying, we'll just take more assets from people. Not realizing that, sure, you may get a few more assets from the big guys, but you're also going to be taking things from your local people, the local communities. The police are going to be taking houses and cars from people who get caught with their first pop plant. I've had everything I owned seized when I was younger, and I never got it back. That was include everything that my father had passed down to me, and he'd passed away recently, so I was, you know, still going through that, and uh, that whole moment in my life, I said, you know, the stupidity of it all. It's because somebody ratted me out for a couple of pop plants. I was like 18 years old. You know, there were these puny little things under a fluorescent light in my basement area. And that was enough for them to threaten to take everything. And they did take everything of mine, pretty much. And we're not, we're talking posters, cannabis posters, comic books, everything I'd made. And if you see the kind of things that police take, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. They took everything except a container full of pot seeds, which were well obvious, we know what they were. And they set it on the top of my dresser as kind of a fuck you, try it again. And that's, those are the kind of police I've encountered in my life. So we have a multi-pronged problem here. We have the Attorney General's office and the government making horrible drug, draconian drug laws. Then we have the police who are abiding by that and choosing to back each other up and taking people's assets and hauling people off to the corrupted prison system where they can go ahead and rot for all they care. And the prison system turns more people into criminals than it stops from being criminals. So I'm not saying that prison shouldn't exist. There are some people who are violent and dangerous, but it should never be a profit motive to put people in jail. It should be a last resort. It should be something we try to avoid rather than try to multiply. But uh, we live in... Uh, draconian society, and it's an ogliarchy, it's a, a patriarchy, it's a, whatever you want to call it, it's anarchy uh, at best, disguised as something a little more functional, and uh, pretty soon that reality is going to rear its ugly head, that you can only hang on to something so much, and the water balloon is almost too full. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, those were my that's what I wanted to convey. I uh, just wanted people to be aware that he had removed that law and that we were going to have uh, more and more problems with this guy. It's not just him, it's the people that he represents. And he's supportive of big tobacco and big alcohol, I'm sure. And uh, just like so many of them are, it's whoever can put the most money in your pocket and convince you that they're right. So uh, stay aware and uh, don't get your shit seized for having a joint. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Have a good day.